I'm going to demonstrate using Git on MacOS with RPCMU. I assume that you're either familiar with Git itself or happy to learn about the system and that you have a copy of RPCMU installed. To demonstrate this I've already got RPCMU running and a terminal that we can work in. I'm going to use a fork of the line editor module as an example repository. I'm using a fork because I'm going to push some changes, but if you're not making changes, you can use public repositories just as well. You'll need to have the Git tool installed on MacOS. The tool is supplied as part of the Xcode development environment. If you do not have the full Xcode installed, you can use the command Xcode select minus minus install to install the tool. I already have the tools installed. You can check that Git has installed properly by running git minus minus version. When we make changes, we need to enter a commit message. The default editor might have been set to vim, so you can configure a slightly more friendly editor like nano. Export editor equals nano. Having set things up, we need to locate the directory that RPCMU uses for HostFS. This might be different on your version of RPCMU, but the default is tilde library application support RPCMU HostFS. So we can change there, tilde library application support RPCMU HostFS. And if we have a look in there, there's very little in there. We look on the Viscos system, we can see the same thing, there is nothing there. I'm going to clone one of my repositories so I can demonstrate making changes. The same principle applies to public repositories as well. To do this, we use git clone. So we do git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash jerf slash line editor. This has downloaded the repository and checked it out into the line editor directory. We can see it here. There is a line editor directory. And if we go inside, we can see there are the files that we've downloaded. The recommended way to handle Viscos file types in the host filing system is to append the file type number to the file names, separated by a comma. As you can see here, there are a couple of files with file types. In particular, le source, which is the line editor source file, has the type fd1. fd1 is the file type for basic text. It is strongly recommended that you keep your basic files in text format, as this means comparing files and editing them on other systems is significantly easier. If we return to Riscos, we can see that the files are there now. The filer won't update automatically, so you'll need to refresh the directory after making changes. We select the Refresh option. And there we are, we have Line Editor. And there are our files. As you can see, the files are all there, and you can see that there are file types on some of the files. If we run the Pling Pling release, it will start building the program. There we go, this has built it and placed a copy in the directory. Here's the new line editor module that we've built. So let's make a change to the code and then rebuild it. I'm not going to do anything complicated, I'm just going to change the help string to demonstrate the principle. If we use shift double click on here, we can load the file into an editor. There we go. I'm using edit because this is a very cut down system but you should use whatever editor you're familiar with. I want to change the help string, so I'll find it and make a simple change. Find Not that one. 
this one. And I just want to make a small change to the message. There we go. We can save the file. And then we can build it again. If we load the module we've just built, yeah, we can double click on it, and then we can check help line editor. And there we go, we can see that it's now by Ollie Betts and me. So we've made our change. Let's see what that looks like in Git. We can return to the terminal over here, and we can do git status to see what the status of the repository is. And this will tell us that we have one modified file, the file we've just changed. We can also see that we've only changed one line by using git diff. This shows the old line in red and the new line that we've added in green. We want to commit this change because it's been tested and we're happy with it. But it needs to be put on a branch so that it's separate from the main development. This will make it easier for other people to review it. So we create a new branch called add my name. We can do that with git checkout minus b add my name. And there we go, we switch to a new branch. This has been created. However, before I can commit anything, I need to configure who I am. Git may try to infer who I am, but it's much better to be explicit about that. This is configured in a global setting with git config. So we can do git config global user.name Charles, Charles Ferguson. and git config user.email jerf at jerf.org Now we can commit the change. We, just, we can use um, git add and git commit or we can explicitly specify which file we want to uh, commit. So there we go. Commit that one file and this will open the nano editor and we can describe the change that we've just made. We should always try and explain what changes we've made so it's clear to people in the future what you were doing and why. The first line is the summary of the change and should be only one line to describe what you were trying to do. And my name, my name is now in the help string. We, go. we can save that file, use Control X. Yes, I want to save it. That's the file. And it's just made the change. So we can see that the change is now present in the repository. We can do a git show command. Git show. And there's our change with the message. Committing the change here only updates our local repository. It hasn't gone anywhere. To make it available to other people, it is necessary to push the change to the remote repository. The remote repository is called Origin by default, and we only want to push the one branch that we created. So we do git push origin add my name. Pushing a change is a write operation. So the remote server needs to know who I am. So I have to enter my username and password. So I enter my username and password and it fails. This is because GitHub doesn't allow you to push using your passwords anymore. Fortunately, the documentation that's been printed explains how to create a personal access token, which you can use to push the code.
If you have such a token, you can use it in place of your password. So we try the command again, git push origin add my name. There's my username. And I will copy my token from another window. As you can see, that was successful. In MacOS, the default is to store your credentials for a given site in your personal keychain. So this login should only be necessary the first time you use a given site. And that's it for the basics. I've shown you how to use Git on MacOS with RPCMU and how to make changes and push them. There are lots of tutorials and help on the internet on using Git, which you should be able to use with what you've seen here. Thank you for watching.